Well, in Philadelphia, um, just for uh, as a, a charity thing to help out, and it was a, it was an English class of, of kids. And the first thing I did, I sat down, and they were like, uh, you know, they they knew I was coming only the day before, and they were all sitting there, and I said, okay, I got a mystery for you. Okay, I am um, probably right now the highest paid writer in the world, and I wasn't even the smartest kid in my class. And I'm um, not the strongest writer. And I have no connections anywhere in, in cinema. And uh, what, how do you explain that? Do you have an explanation for that? Other than luck, just pure out luck. Let's suppose luck, put luck aside for a second. What could be the answer to that question? I'm not the smartest, I'm not the best writer. So what, what is it, what is, what's, what's going on? Anybody? And then I was asking them in class and they were all thinking, some of the kids had interesting answers like determination or things like that. I said, yes, yes, for sure. Belief system, all that stuff, sure. And I said, uh, I, I, I have an answer. And I said, it's, um, I'm more me than they're them. And by that I mean, the answer to your question is, the fact that I'm not the smartest, all the flaws, all the, all the things, all the limitations, all of that, that's all part of you, who you are specifically. And don't try to be anything else uh, good about it. Even if they made fun of you, even if it doesn't seem there's any market for, for who you are. Um, if you're who you are, I can never write you as, as, as good as you can write that. You know, your specific thing in life is uh, a dazzling thing. And, and uh, it, it, when, you, when, a, when a person speaks really, really clearly about, you know, without any self-consciousness and they just are themselves, it just shines like a light. It pops right through everything. It says, wow, this is not generalized. I didn't try to be this person. I didn't try to be funnier than I am. I didn't try to be cooler than I am. In fact, I'm incredibly uncool, you know, and you keep on going and you keep on doing that. And in general, that's going to cause you to just erupt and come out and everyone's going to hear your voice. The moment you try to fit in and you try to try to go, oh, people like this, so I'm going to do this. People will be easier with this if I do this, um, is the moment you go into the general pot and then it becomes entirely about luck. Because then you're just another decent writer in a pool of everyone else that's trying to be general. And, and then you just, you know, hope. So basically be yourself. Yeah, I mean, it, it, sounds, it sounds trite like that, but it's that, that each individual person is an absolutely uh, unique point of view. Absolutely unique. And if you, can, can, if you can learn to convey that point of view, first of all, you have to know yourself. So, you know, to be okay with yourself and to be very self-aware of who you are and then to convey that in your art form uh, will make you very powerful. Very powerful. Hi. Um, what? Okay. Um, do you think that it's right for, or do you think that uh, it's better for a writer to stick to a genre that uh, they're comfortable with and that they've experimented with? Or do you think that it's important for writers to break free and change trends? Um, again, going to this thing, oh, not as an agenda. So you have to look at yourself. So if it is that you love to tell 74 stories exactly the same way, that's what you should do. If that's who you are, you have so much, because then you'll see the details in it. You'll see the, the intricacies that will make me excited about it. If you do it as a, an agenda, I'm going to know that you're being general, and then I'll start to look away from you. You know, and the same thing, if it's time to change completely, but it completely represents you, you went to, I don't know, you went on a safari, and you fell in love with a guy who was showing you the safari, and that changed your whole life, and you came back, and now you can't write anything the way you used to. That's what you have to do. That's your new point of view that's absolutely accurate and truthful, so you do have to change. So it depends moment to moment. The moment you start thinking about it like that, like an agenda, back in the general pool. Okay. Uh, the third group, which is both. You know, I falsely or truthfully or whatever, however, you know, we'll see, time will tell, but I believe you can do both. Um, it, it, per perhaps. The struggle will be this, this rarefied chef thing that we talked about over here. That the more I learn, the more, the more experience I have, the more storytelling and more expertise I have, the, more, the harder it is to be accessible. You know? um, and you don't want it to be uh, rarefied, and yet, again, I have to honor who I am. So that struggle will always go on. Um, but I was the first one when I was watching, you know, I was tortured when I watched the, uh, the Oscars with Gandhi, because Gandhi's like one of my favorite movies, but also E.T. was one of my favorite movies of all time. And, and I was just tortured between, between the two, and, 
I remember, you know, almost everyone in Hollywood does one for them and one for me, one for them and one for me. You know, that's how they, they think about it. Um, and in fact, E.T. E for me was the, the example of that you can do both. You can make a meaningful um, a drama of, that meant something to me on a, on a personal level and then also still have, you know, enchant the world in terms of the riding of the, the roller coaster and all and the, and the entertainment value of it. <clears throat> This is my wife always says that. Why do you, you keep getting beaten up? Because the people that want the roller coaster want the other roller coaster. The people that want the, the art film, they want the art film and they hate you for doing the roller coaster. Why don't you just do it like everybody else? I go, I can't. I wish I could. Because I, I wish I really could. I really wish I could choose one and just do that. I wish I could not. I wish I could make Unbreakable and just make the popcorn version of Unbreakable. I really wish I, I could have. I mean, I, it was a fantastic idea right at the right time. But, you know, I wanted it to be. So I hired the cinematographer who did Wings of the Dove. <clears throat> and I hired the crew, and we did it in a very serious way. And, and there was no dishkum nishkum at the end of the fight, at the end of the movie. They talked, you know, and they, and they, they, they walked out. You know, it was an idea. Um, those are the two sides. They're always, they feel at peace with me. But they, when they come out, out into the, into the cinema world, and they get, um, it's that, they, the rift, because they either do fall into one or the other. But I think over time, um, hopefully over time, that, that'll get eased a bit. Um, and so my, my long-winded answer was I hope to do both, so third category. Hi, Harneet from Media um, worked with the You've worked with Mel Gibson, Bruce Willis, and now Mark Wahlberg. Is it easier to work with an established star rather than a newcomer? Um, uh, well, what it, what it does, especially, especially uh, um, with, the, with uh, action stars. The three of them are action stars. I, li I like to cast action stars and then not let them do action. I, I like that, that kind of uh, uh, bridle, uh, the expectations of the audience, because uh, they bring a lot of energy just by who they are to the screen. Um, Mark, you've never seen Mark uh, in a movie like this. Um, he's, a, he's just so human and sweet and funny and uh, just a school teacher, just an ordinary joke. He doesn't know anything. He just, that's all he knows. Um, I enjoy that, that energy so that the audience knows in some subtle way that this is supposed to be um, entertaining and have, have a ride, but it's in a different way. So I, I like Star's baggage. I just don't necessarily use the same baggage. I use it against the, the story as a kind of juxtaposition.